Let's continue talking about graphs of functions. Local and global maximums and minimums basically are telling us high points and low points of our graph. Now these definitions you have to read through usually a couple times and think about what it's telling you. A function value f of a, so that's the output value or the y value, is called a relative maximum of your function when there exists an interval, an open interval, x sub 1 to x sub 2, that contains a, that's our input value, such that f of a is greater than or equal to f of x for any x in that open interval. Now that's a lot, so let's think about this. What that is really telling you is let's say we have some graph that looks like this. Yeah, let's continue. Let's say this is x sub 1, let's say this is x sub 2, okay, and then here's our high point, and that is A. Alright, I have an arrow here so I can point to things. Alright, so a function value f of A, so this output value right there is f of A. So let's label that, and that is f of A. So f of a is a relative maximum if there exists an interval x sub 1, here's x sub 1 to x sub 2, and a is within that open interval. And notice that f of a is greater or higher than any other output value on that interval between x sub 1 and x sub 2. And so that's basically what this definition is telling us. It's clearly defining that at A, we have a maximum and the value is f of A. Likewise, we could have a relative minimum, and that would be a low point. So I'll just use the same graph. Let's say we have something that goes like this. And then at A there, we would have a local minimum or a relative minimum. A lot of times it's much easier if we just jump into an example so you can look at it and, and see exactly what we're talking about. Find any relative maximums and minimums for this function h of x. Now, I don't expect you to know exactly what this graph is going to look like, although you should know that because it's a polynomial and it's an x to the third power and it's a positive coefficient, that the graph is as we go, as x goes to negative infinity, the graph is going down, and as f goes to positive infinity, it's going up. So it probably will look something like that. But even if we didn't recognize that, let's just say, okay, here we go. Let's find relative maxes and relative mins for this function. We're going to have to use a graphing utility, so I'm going to pull out my graphing calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and graph this and take a look at it. So I've got 2 thirds x cubed, so I'm going to do 2 x cubed divided by 3, that's 2 thirds x cubed, minus 1 half x squared, so that's x squared divided by 2, minus 15x, and we'll try it in our standard window. And you'll notice the standard, that is the shape that I had drawn earlier, except I need to see more y values. So I'm going to change my window a little bit. And how about I make y go from negative 30 to positive 30 with a scale of 5? Oh, not quite. I need to go a little lower than negative 30. So how about negative 35? There we go. So now I have my full picture of what I need to see. So a relative maximum we can see happens around x equals negative 2 and a half, somewhere between negative 2 and 3 possibly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Calculate menu, press 2nd, and the Trace button. And number 4 here will find a maximum for me. So I'm going to press Enter. And it says, OK, go a little bit to the left of the maximum. That's good enough. Enter. And then go a little bit to the right. That's fine. Enter. Give me a guess. I'll just press Enter. And there it is. So notice the calculator is telling me negative 2.500001. I'm guessing 
that it's probably exactly negative 2.5. So until we learn some other methods to figure out the exact x value, I'm pretty confident that it's negative 2.5 or negative 2.5. And then my output is 23.9583 repeating. So that would be the maximum value. All right, so negative 2.5. And then I'm going to say 23.958. So negative 2.5 comma 23.35, was it 358? See, now I forgot it already. Oh, I'm sorry, 958. And so that's going to be a relative maximum point. If the problem asks find the maximum val relative maximum value, then I would just say the y uh, coordinate for that. All right, now we also want to find minimums, so let's go back to our graph, and let's calculate a minimum. So we're going to go to the same menu, second trace to the calculate menu, and we're going to find the minimum, a local minimum, and it says give me a left bound, I could use any of these, but that's good enough. And then go a little bit to the right of the minimum. So that's fine. Enter, guess, enter. And I'm guessing it's exactly at x equals 3 and negative 31 and a half. So negative, or positive 3 and negative 31 and a half. And so that point is a relative minimum. Now a global maximum and a global minimum, those are over the entire domain of the graph, what is the maximum value? And for this particular graph, because it's a cubic polynomial, there is no maximum because it just keeps going up to infinity as x gets bigger and bigger, and then it goes to negative infinity as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's no global maximum or global minimum, but we do have relative ones, which mean over a, a certain interval, it's the highest value or the lowest value. So that's how you find it using technology. Now, we're going to need that concept sometimes to answer this question. When is a function increasing? When is a function decreasing? When is it constant? So we have some definitions for those as well. A function is increasing on an interval if for any two x values in the interval, if x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, then our output for the function at x sub 1 will be less than the output for the function at x sub 2. So once again, a little picture here will help clarify this for you. Let's say here's x sub 1 and here's x sub 2. My function is increasing basically if it's going up. So if I have a point on my graph, that means that what's the output there, what's the y value, versus the y value here. So as we take x values and increase them, our outputs are also increasing. So an increasing function is basically where the function is going up. And then a decreasing function would be where a function is going down. So that would be something that's going like that. And then a constant function is where we have the same y value all the way across the interval, which means that we have a horizontal segment on our graph. All right, so let's just jump right to an example to make some sense of this. Where is this function increasing? Where is it decreasing? And where is it constant? So looking at a graph makes it pretty easy to answer. So let's start with increasing. Where is this function increasing? Well, as you can see, this arrow means it goes down to negative infinity. So as x goes from negative infinity all the way until, what's my x value right there? Need an arrow. My x value right there is negative 2. So from x equals negative infinity to negative 2, my points are going up. My outputs are going up. So, 
negative infinity to negative 2. And we're not going to include the endpoints. So when we talk about increasing, decreasing, we'll just say the open intervals because it's increasing over an interval, not at a particular point. When you get to calculus, you'll talk about increasing or decreasing at a specific x value, at a point. All right, is it increasing anywhere else? Well, here it's not going up or down. Here it's going down. But then you can see here, it starts to go up again. So from this spot right here, all the way through there, and there's no arrow, so it stops, stops there. So what are those x values? One, two, three, four. So that's x equals 4, and then it keeps going up, keeps increasing all the way until x equals 9. So from 4 to 9, it's also increasing. So union 4, 9. So those are the two sections of my graph where it's increasing. How about decreasing? Where is my function decreasing? Well, so now I'm looking at as I move from left to right, when is it going down? And that would be this section right here. So what are the x values for that section? Well, that's going to be x equals 1 until x equals 4. So it's decreasing from 1 to 4. And then finally, where is it constant? Well, constant is when it's not going up or down, and that's this little section here. So what are those x values? That's x equals negative 2 until x equals 1. So it's constant from x equals negative 2 to positive 1. And that's it. So it's really easy if you have the graph to identify where it's increasing, decreasing, or constant. What if I don't give you a graph? What if I give you a function? So if unless you know how to draw the graph right away looking at the function, we're going to have to use some kind of graphing utility. So let's do that. So this is a polynomial once again. So right away I can tell you, where is this going to be constant? Well, it's never going to be constant because we know the shape of a polynomial. The shape of a polynomial is nice and smooth. So there's no horizontal segment on this graph. So I know that it's not constant anywhere. So let's figure out where it's increasing, decreasing. So we have an x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. And let's look at it in the standard window, and that is enough for us to see the important points here. Now, notice we just talked about local maximums and minimums. So I'm going to need to find that local maximum. I'm going to hit trace. Looks like it happens around negative 2. And then I know my graph is increasing from x equals negative infinity all the way until x equals negative 2. So I'll show you what I mean here. So as x is going from negative infinity all the way up until negative 2, my graph is increasing. And then from negative 2 down to what looks like to be 0, x equals 0, it's decreasing, and then after zero, it starts increasing again, and then forever as x goes to infinity. So it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, and then again from zero to infinity. So let's write that. Union with zero to infinity. And then it was decreasing at that small part between negative 2 and 0. And that's it.